Hello and welcome to today's video. Now previously you might have seen me to struggle to put up an IKEA Hectar light fitting in the studio here. I mean how? I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I really don't. And uh, now it's time to put some proper lamps in them and this is what I've opted for. So these are Philips Hue White and Colour Ambience GU10 lamps. Now they've got a 315 lumen output and uh, yeah, they are very expensive GU10 bulbs. They work out around about 40 to 50 quid each depending on where you buy them, if there's any offers on. They were half priced during Amazon Prime Day and I'm a bit annoyed that I didn't get them then because I had to pay a lot more for them. But I've got two packs of two lights and uh, I've got three lamp holders to put them in. So I'm gonna have one spare. So I might stick one in the outside light, which I've also done a video on. So uh, yeah, what we'll do in this video is we will unbox them, which probably won't take long, compare them to a sort of standard GU10 lamp and then get them installed and have a little play and see if we can bring a bit more color to the studio which I'm really hoping we can. Now, I believe these are the latest iteration of these GU10 bulbs from Hue, and I think they can do the color ambient seed things where they sort of fade in between different colors, but they might need a firmware update to do that. So we will see, but yeah, I think these are the latest and greatest at time of recording. Okay, so uh, yeah, we've just got lots of standard Hue stuff on the box. I mean, it looked like it was kicked here from Amazon. Don't know where my knife is, so I'll just uh, hack at it with a screwdriver. And we're in. There you go. A very expensive GU10 bulb. Now, I believe the original versions of these were slightly bigger, so if you put them in a very small GU10 lamp holder, they used to stick out like a sore thumb. They've manufactured them to be a lot smaller, which is perfect. So you could put these in pretty much any standard GU10 lamp holder. So there's that one. I mean, the box, did I rip the box? I don't know if I did, but the box was sealed. I hope these work. And there we go, we've got another one in there. Hey. Yeah, look at that. I definitely didn't do that. Goodness me. Right, and I think there's some sort of documentation in here. If you're into all the Philips Hue stuff, then I do have a playlist with like every single Philips Hue video that I've ever made, which is quite a lot of them. That'd probably keep you entertained for a day. You're into that kind of thing which if you're watching this video, you probably are. Speaking of that, if you want to subscribe to this channel, please do, please do that. It's helping the channel grow. I'm slowly getting towards 10,000 subscribers and to hit that milestone before Christmas would be awesome. Okay, so this is one of the booklets that comes with it. If you note down the serial number, if you have trouble with the um, Zigbee protocol finding the lights, you can enter the serial number and that makes it easier to find them. And obviously once the lamps are in the bulb holders, it's very hard to read the serial numbers because they're down there. So yes, yeah, might be a good idea to write down the serial numbers, but I'm an excited child, so I'll probably just stick them in there and hope that it works. It should work. And then what else do we have here? We've got the legal manual. No, no. Okay, so let's bring in a sort of standard GU10 lamp next to the Hue. So, you know, it's a slightly thicker boy, nothing wrong with that. But you know, this one is the cheapest of the cheap. I think I recovered this from our outside light before I put actual Philip Hue white GU10s in it. So, you know, it's definitely a little bit chonkier, but this is like me before lockdown. This is me after lockdown, you know. A little bit more to love, but a lot more colorful. I oh, know. So yeah, there you go, that is, that is them. So I guess what I'm gonna do now is put them in the lamp holder, turn on the lights and get them configured. Okay, so I've set a camera up on the lights so you can see them in action. And um, let's go into the Hue app. And what I'll do is I will put my Hue app on the screen there. And uh, yeah, let's add some lights. 
So go into settings, lights, and then press the add button. And then we'll do a search and hopefully it will find three new lights in theory. This is probably when I'm gonna regret not writing down the serial numbers. There you go, it's found two, it's found three. Excellent, good stuff. Right, new light found. Okay, so it's changed the color of the middle light to a um, sort of purpley color. So let's name that one Studio Spot 2, save. And there we go, it's cycling through the colors, matching what's happening on the screen, awesome. Right, let's go to the next light. Okay, so that one is the one nearest the door, so I'm gonna call that Studio Spot 1. Save. Okay, that's fine. And then we'll do the next light. So that'll be the end one. Look, they're all different colors, that's cool. We will call that Studio Spot Three, excellent. So there we go, we've got our different colored lights done. So um, it wants us to add them to a room so they all go in the stu stu studio. So basically when I turn off all the lights in the studio, those ones will be included, done. Okay, so what zone are they in? Well, they're upstairs, so let's put them in the upstairs zone. And I think lights can exist in multiple zones, so that's why it's not um, moved them. But yeah, that's fine. Job done. There we go, lights are ready to use. And I actually quite like those colors as they are. Let's have a little look at the settings of this. So let's have a look at spot one. Now this is an important thing to change in all hue light bulbs. And this is a reason why you shouldn't use third party bulbs because they don't have this setting. So the power on behavior. Now at the moment, it's default. So if the light loses power and then regains power, it will just come on on its standard warm white setting. Now that's fine, but obviously if you have a power cut in the middle of the night and then the power comes back on, you're gonna have a bright light on in your room. Now it doesn't matter so much in the studio because no one sleeps in here, but if you've got a hue light in a bedroom, then that would be quite annoying. So let's change that power on behavior to just have it as if, if it's off, it will stay off or if it's on, it will come back on. So we'll do that. So we'll save that. And then let's go into spot two and change that setting as well. It's really easy to forget about that. And there have been occasions where I've set up a load of few lights and just forgotten about it. And then there's been like a power wobble and then everything comes back on and it's really annoying. So that's perfect. So those are all saved now. So if we go into my home and then into the stu stu studio, so that's showing all the different lights I've got in the studio and what color they are at the moment. So that looks pretty cool. So let's have a look in the Hue Scene Gallery for some different kind of, ooh, Rio, yeah. Look at that. That's a nice selection of colors and the lights have actually changed to that. What other ones we've got? Chinatown, Ibiza, Osaka, Tokyo. I like this one. That's sort of the colors I like to have my lights on. So I'm gonna do done. I like that. So we're gonna add that to my scenes. Cool, so there is Tokyo. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off um, the main studio lights, the bright ones, the white ones, and uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of an idea of uh, how this room looks all hued up. <laughs> there we go, camera's waking up, slowly finding me. So now we go in, back into the Hue app. Monitors are bursting out the color. Perfect. There we go. Awesome. This, Lens works brilliantly at low light. Okay, so, okay, so. <laughs> so yeah, look, we can change the studio lights around. I put it on my colors scheme, which is sort of all different colors. Let's put it on the Tokyo one. Nice, I like that. That'll look good for gaming, I reckon. 
Now, I reckon if I try and turn on the dynamic scenes thing, I don't reckon the studio spots will work because they haven't had a software update. No. So the lights around me are changing to different colors, but the studio spots are staying the same because they haven't had a software update. Now, the slightly annoying thing about Hue lights is that the software updates aren't immediate. Like the lights have to be on for a couple of hours and then they sort of get the update somehow. I'm not entirely sure why or how, but that's how it works. So at the moment, all the other hue lights are cycling through the different colors. Those ones aren't. So let's just put it back to colors for now. That is so smart. I do love the hue ecosystem. It makes me really happy. And I just love having all these different colors and you know, there's still so many hue things I want to get. There's, with our, we've got an upcoming garden project and I'm gonna try and get some hue stuff out in the garden because we're gonna have some power down at the bottom of the garden. So, you know, there should be some more outdoor stuff soon. If you wanna help me purchase such things, then please do consider joining the channel. Joining costs from 99p a month. You can do it for one month, you can keep going and you can subscribe to stupidly expensive tiers and uh, yeah, I have to give a massive shout out to David who is up at one of those stupidly expensive tiers. Thank you, David, it's very kind of you. But yeah, if you wanna help fund the channel so I can buy all these ridiculous hue lights, then uh, feel free to. Well, there we go, that is the Hue GU10 white and color ambience light and I'm really happy with them, I really am. So uh, yeah, there's not much else for me to say. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.